Peace and love, YouTube. Phil Facts here, Snobby Sports in full effect. It's the Sports Snob, and it's time to talk about some boxing. It's been a minute since I made a boxing video because the NBA had us, you had me captivated. And all of this Knicks business has me like, you know, I'm a little turned off by all of the videos I've been watching from everyone on all aspects of sports. And it has a lot to do with the fact that we don't have a lot to go on. So you start hearing people's personal opinions and some people's opinions don't need to be public. But mine does because, you know, I got it like that. To the sport of boxing, this blunts for you. Why? Because Dana White and the UFC is trying to fuck you up. And that shit is real. My man Blue Blood is the first one to point it out. Mainstream. And I say mainstream even though I know Blue Blood is a YouTube channel. Blue Blood is connected. He get real information from real sources. So <clears throat> his observation is fucking accurate. And, you know, I got to give credit to what credit is due because it sparked the thought in my mind. And, yo, UFC right now is... Dana White is not playing. If boxing don't put him down, then he going to put down boxing. That's what he's doing, yo. He's killing it. Them pay-per-views they having, them UFC pay-per-views, they becoming more than just a distraction. But um, you need to go watch Blue Blood's video <coughs> about that topic. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not, I'm not doing that over. Y'all heard people cough before. You can't catch the corona through the motherfucking mic, so calm down. So, yeah, I'm not going to OD with that because Blue Blood got that covered. And I just want to, you know, direct y'all to him because his, his channel is official. And, you know, a lot of people's channel was opinion-based like mine. But Blue Blood, Blood be speaking to real people. He, be, he got Bob um, Arum on his fucking sh on his show, all right? Fuck getting a promoter. He got Bob Arum on his show, all right? So you got to respect that. Enough respect to Blue Blood. New York Hustle Ground all in him. It shows. Shout out to um Fanon, because I fuck with Fanon. Um, what is it? BFTB boxing. Um, I don't know. I, I I watch I watch everybody. Blue um I said blue already. Um, you know the all of the people that's down with the LBDC, right? The Lions with LDBC, L, the Lions Den Boxing Company. My man Ticket TV, want to give him a shout out, even though I know that's a basketball channel. But um I don't got, none of my information comes from, except for the blue blood shit, this, this video right here, I didn't get any info, but I just want to give shout outs because I do watch their channels, and I like to hear what they talking about, word, but, um, um, there's, a, there's another one, Contenders Regime, I like fam, Contenders Regime, me and him gonna link, we gonna give y'all something, you know, if, if he fuck with a nigga, if he fuck with a nigga, I'm gonna fuck with him, we gonna do something together, cause his opinion, his perspective, is another one that I like. Some people was riders, B. I'm going to keep it 100. And this boxing game is funny. It's real funny. I think niggas be getting some bread on some channels, man. For real. Because, yo, niggas be riding. Only a couple of niggas is keeping it real. So, I'm going to throw my hat into the forum real quick. Since my name is Facts, here I go. Let me come with it. Right now... With all due respect, today's Friday. If y'all boxing fans, if you a real boxing fan, yo, right now, you should be hyped up. Because all of the dope fights, they coming. It started with the Charlos. And now this weekend is Tia Fimo and Loma. Mm. Damn, that's going to be good. Woo. Yo, who? Yo, I, yo, I don't even know. I don't know who to pick in this one. You can't go with your heart in boxing. Not when you're trying to pick the winner. I'm going to tell you, that's the problem with a lot of sports fans. And I know because I'm a Knicks fan and I catch myself doing it with the Knicks. But with boxing, I know better. Ain't no going by feelings. It's like Roy Jones versus Mike Tyson. I love Roy Jones. And my heart wants him to win. But my mind tells me Mike Tyson going to fuck him up. 
And the way they setting up the rules, Mike Tyson going to fuck him up. Why? Because boxing will make a lot of money selling the name Mike Tyson. And it will give them another weapon to battle the UFC. Because the UFC is coming, y'all. If you are, if you are a combat sport, if you a combat sports fan like me, I like combat sports, so I watch a little bit. I grew up watching kung fu flicks, so I fucks with everything. I love Muhammad Ali and Bruce Lee. Those are my two favorite niggas before I knew about everything else. And then Rocky, the Rocky movie, that didn't help. I remember Rocky when I was a little kid, so you know that was before I even got into basketball. Keep it a hundred. I knew about boxing, all right, and combat sports. Kung Fu, Bruce Lee. So the UFC, I keep my eye on that. I may not follow it. I'm not a hardcore fan. Once again, I know it's a boxing video, and the real boxing fans don't even want to hear the name. <laughs> you only want to hear the UFC. Pardon me, y'all. But I got to bring this up because it's a serious issue. It really is, yo. Um, and, you know, I feel bad for Roy Jones, man, because he, I know he see it. He a sacrificial lamb, man. He's a name. He's a legacy. He's probably one of the most accomplished boxers in history. And because people love Mike Tyson so much, they're going to try to fuck Roy Jones' legacy up and feed it to Mike Tyson's legacy. Now, they both they both didn't end great, you know? So everybody talking about Roy Jones getting knocked out. Mike Tyson quit in a fucking fight, all right? He quit against a bum. So all y'all Mike Tyson fans that be trying to... Yeah, Y'all think he could beat Deontay Wilder? Y'all wilding. But this is the shit people want to see. So people people got a narrative now, and they running with it, and they trying to make that shit reality. How do I know this? Because I, I'm a, I got mad bitches, and this is what bitches do. Feel me? So I'm used to this already. I've seen this before. This technique this is not new. So, like I was saying, I don't want to disrespect Tiafimo, and I don't want to disrespect Loma, but I'm worried for Tiafimo, and I think that I think that he's capable of beating Loma. But boxing is a fucking business, and after what we just saw happen to Dante Wilder, Deontay Wilder, pardon me, and um in that Tyson Fury situation, the glove gate bullshit that happened in both fights, come to find out. Yo, why do I feel like they gonna try to shit on Tiafimo? And I'm gonna tell you why I feel that way and what makes this a valid perspective. Because they shitted on Devin Haney. They sh they shitted on Devin Haney. And right now, he's basically standing there with a... He might as well... His belt might as well be from the fucking gum... A bubble gum machine that he paid 25 cents for. Because it's fucking useless right now. Because the belt that he has... Is overshadowed by the fact that they're saying that Loma is the champion. He's the WBC champion, even though he has that fake. Um, it's a, not a title. It's not an actual belt, but it's a, it's a fucking title. What is? That? I forgot the name of that shit. With the, it's the it's the duck. It's the Supreme Duck shit. If you ask me, that's. <laughs> nah, but for real though, um, I forgot what's the name of the 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 the, the privilege that he. Not only that, but the, the other shit about it was that they didn't even. He didn't earn this position that he was given. I forgot what the name of the damn title is. It's really pissing me off because on the, it's right there. But I'm also processing thoughts of the things I want to say. And reality is, like I said, the bottom line is they put Loma They helped put Lomachenko in a position of being protected. Um, also, um, see, see, see like this. If Loma wins, he gets Teofimo's belt. Right? If Teofimo wins... They not handing him no fucking belt because Loma don't got a belt. He has a title, which not physical, a, a name for some of y'all niggas that don't got common sense or not informed about boxing. Um, Loma Checo has been given it. I just really wish that I, I didn't slip my mind. But at the end of the day, the reality is that Tiafimo is looking like he's being set up. I know that Lomo's not going to knock him out, but... This is a fight where Tiafimo has to knock him out. He has to knock out Loma. He can't leave it up to the judges. This is a fight where a situation where the boxer, one boxer, cannot leave it up to the judges because if it's a close fight, he's not getting a decision. 
and he's going to have to start over. He's, he's, if he loses, he'll have to start over. And Lomo is dangerous. Lomo is not a, he's not a game. He's not soft. You know what I mean? That's an that's official boxer. I mean, I know he's protected. And don't get me wrong. I know that he's a little juiced up. You know, certain shit about him is juiced up. The, 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 the hundred year fucking, you know, amateur boxing career he had. Getting title shot. Him and Triple G, we already know that the Caucasian boxer fans um, and the Caucasian businessmen involved in boxing and some Hispanics, um, those are their guys. Those are their guys. They fucking love Fury, Lomacheco, and they love, um, Can um, well, yeah, Canelo too. Lomo, Triple G, Canelo, and Fury. They all get away with some shit because of their complexion in boxing. And it's funny because even though they're not the best in none of their weight classes, they're not the best. The fighters that are the best are not being promoted and those four in, in those divisions are. That says a lot. That shit is real. You can't deny it. You can't go around it. And it's whack. And being that um, Timo is facing off against um, one of the, I want to say the fake ass racist fans, because I know that all white people ain't racist, and I know all white boxing fans ain't racist, especially our American boxing fans, American boxing fans, they, they with us on the black, on the black side of shit, so we really talking about, let's keep it a hundred, my Hispanic peoples, who be on some bullshit, and then what's really fucked up is that Tiafimo's not even Mexican, right? So that means that he probably ain't getting that much support from the Hispanics really either. Um, yeah, Timo's from Honduras, so yeah, I don't know how how deep his fit. He not no Ryan Garcia. Ain't a million bitches from Mexico loving him. Tiafimo's a fighter. He earned the position he's in, and he got to come in there better he, than he ever has, man, so that he don't get robbed. So I don't mean to be long-winded about that, but I think that this T.O. shit, we can't act like um, ain't some shit up because like I brought up with the Mike Tyson, Roy Jones shit and the Deontay Wilder. We starting to see in boxing now. It's starting, they're not doing it so good no more. I don't know if it's the social media, the access, but they're not able to fucking hide a lot of bullshit no more. You know, people was coming back dirty from steroids and then you got the commissions and shit making excuses and you know the fans we not stupid and we be able to see and find out on our own and do research and it's not looking good boxing got to get their shit together with how it's being run before the ufc really takes it down dana white fuck around and end up running boxing and the ufc because dana white loves boxing don't get it twisted but the world of boxing won't let dana white in once again, y'all got to watch Blue Blood's video because Blue Blood explains all of this shit. And, yo, Tiafimo, good luck, bro. I got your back. I'm rooting for you. I think you could do it. But, like I said, fam, I think you got to knock that nigga out because them judges, they not, they not your friend. All right. So, real quick, we already know Tyson Fury's on some bullshit. And we already knew that we wasn't going to see that fight this year. But it looked like this nigga's trying to weasel out of getting get knocked out by Deontay Wilder, period. And I think it was for non. This is why I want to give them people a uh, shout out. Because, um, like I said, I watch a lot of people's videos. And it's been a minute since I did a boxing video. So I've just been accumulating information and, and perspectives and shit. And I think it was for non. Because I usually watch for non or blue blood. I don't watch everybody on a regular basis like I do those two. Um, those are my two favorites. And um, I think it was Fanon that brought up that um, Tyson Fury could fuck around and get knocked out before Deontay Wilder even get his hands on him. You ever think about that? His last few fights. Yeah, it was Fanon. Fanon's the one that brought that shit up. His last few fights been suspect. Besides him beating um, Wilder, we know how he did that shit. If you look back at his last few fights and opponents, he didn't do too well. And he cheated. Steroids and fighting dirty. And fucking who knows with the glove. The last time that that nigga, now nah, you can't even say that. Because the Klitschko's fight is the fight where he, he ended up being dirty. 
So even though his gloves was regular in that fight because Klitschko knew something and he made sure that that nigga, it was some shit about the gloves because Klitschko knew. And that's the last time that we know for a fact. Yeah, yo, this nigga's dirty, y'all. I'm sorry. There's no way around it. Fury's dirty. And, you know, whoever he fights, I'm not saying that. I, yeah, it was Fanon because like he, Fanon was saying it because I'm, I'm about to say the same thing, but it's because I do feel the same way. We know that nigga can box, so we're not saying it like he's soft. Like, but the problem is, though, that we also saw that he's vulnerable in a couple of fights, and he had to cheat to win to get to where he's at right now. And that being said, yo, like, a nigga could fuck around and knock him out before Dante even get to him. Because he's anxious. He's worried. You can see it. So he want to fight already. He want to get it out the way so that he can try to probably get some more money. Whatever. Or, you know, build up his legacy so that way the, the racist boxing fans could um, continue to argue for him. Um, Let's see what happens with Tyson Fury, man. I, I, I want to see the, the fight between him and Deontay Wilder, but we got to keep it 100, man. If we do get that fight, we already know it's not going to happen this year because they just starting to let fans back into um, events, and we got to see how that goes. Um, so we know that they need to make money anyway because they're going to need the fans because that bread is, that's missing, that all that chicken, they're not going to let that slip. Nah, they got to have people come there and spend that bread. Concessions, the gate, all that shit add up. And Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury, they cost a lot, me. So that fight right there, when it happens, I'll make a video. But until then, I'm not going to talk about that shit no more. Because like I said, we probably are like a year away from that shit even happening, man. Word. I need some coffee. So right now, I'm going to get into the Javonta Davis Leo Santa Cruz shit, cause they shit is coming up next too. After this, um, after this fight with Tio, I think the next big fight is Javonta Davis and um, Santa Cruz. That's another pay per view joint. And the only thing that I got really interested to say about that fight, I mean y'all, I mean I think anybody that watches boxing knows that Santa Cruz is a, is a master ducker. Who can he can fight? Don't get it twisted, he can fight. Um. But he's trying to be, I, I think I told you about this philosophy, my last boxing video. He's trying to win the fight before they even get in the ring. He, that's what he's hoping for. He's hoping Javonta fucks up and doesn't make weight. Then he's also hoping that he swells up after he loses all that weight. You know how the boxers, they 20 pounds come right back on. He's banking on Javonta losing by fatigue. Let's be honest. That's what it is. Leo Santa Cruz is probably going to run around that whole fucking fight. And if, De and if Javante don't land a good punch, like we saw when he fought Gamboa, if he don't land a good punch, the fight could drag out and Leo Santa Cruz could end up fucking, they could end up robbing him. Also, too, this fight is funny because it got moved. And, um, that's another problem for Javonta once again. That shit plays into Santa Cruz's hands because we all know about the weight issues this kid be having. And extra time, I hope that means extra training. And I know you don't want to overtrain. So this is a fucking problem because he has a history. Or we wouldn't even be talking about it. We would already just be saying when, Leo, when they fight, he going to knock him the fuck out. But there is a method to the to the magic that Santa Cruz is displaying. And at first, I didn't think that shit was going to work until they did this. Um, like I said, until they rescheduled the fight. That's when the bells went off in my head. And I'm like, yo, that shit ain't good for Javon. So it's not fair. It's not good. It's not going to be projected as unfair because it's a business decision. Clearly, from Connecticut moving the fight to... Um, I think San Antonio, they're going to have the fight in the Alamo Dome. So they'll have to make a lot more money, bottom line. And so how, who can argue with that? Neither fight is going to argue with that because that's why they fight to make bread. So this one is fucked up because, like I said, I think that um, something's not right about Javante's fight neither. But we'll find out when it happens, man. Now I want to talk about Canelo. 
the other cheetah that nobody that that people act like he don't cheat, like he didn't cheat with the steroids. Um, why your man talking about fighting fight Jamal Charlo now? Money must be tight, huh? Huh, player? Huh? Them 40, 50 million dollars of fight that they were supposed to give you, that shit hurting right now because they ain't giving it to you, huh? You gotta fight somebody, and clearly you got you have like a you can see it, Loma check. I mean, pardon me. It's because niggas are all cheating today. So that's what's all in my mind. All these fucking cheaters that's getting all these opportunities. And there's a lot of good fighters out there that don't get no love. But anyway, Canelo is a fucking cheater. I'm not I don't have a problem saying it. And now that his chicken is is like it's not depleted. I'm sure he's rich, so. I know he got bread. I know he got investments, but I know he was banking on making more money and estimated getting more chicken coming in with that deal that fell apart. And I don't care what number. I don't know what's the numbers. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know the numbers. I don't care the numbers. I know that, that Charlo pay-per-view was fire. That shit was fire, and I know it did good. I heard Bob Arum's numbers. Blue said some numbers. I, I'm on blue side. I think that Bob Aaron was throwing shit, you know, throwing shitty shade. And um, I think that Canelo Alvarez realizes that if he wants to make the type of bread that he's used to making or he was assuming he would be making, that he might have to take on uh, Jamal, uh, the challenge of fighting Jamal. Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? Finally, after all the ducking and shit, the duck season is over, and Canelo is going to put on the... He got to fight one of the Charlos, bro. He done moved up and down weight. I feel like he was running and being an opportunist like a chick. Different niggas. One nigga, she fucking for a moment, but she got her eye on that other nigga. As soon as the opportunity presents itself, she out of here. She going over there. And that's what Canelo be doing. He be hopping around looking for the best opportunity. That sucker shit they doing for my man David Benavidez's belt. That shit is whack, yo. Instead of fighting my man for the belt, yo. Yo, Canelo, I got no respect for you, fam. I got no respect for you because you could be, you trying to do some sucker shit with Caleb Plant. That's my boy. American white boy. I love that nigga Caleb Plant. That's my fucking boy, yo. Caleb Plant. I don't talk about him a lot, y'all, because right now, like I said, you know, there's not a lot of activity going on. But I hope that Caleb, man, starts getting some love, man, because... He's nice, man. The world needs to get to see him, man. Everybody don't know. Only real boxing fans know about Caleb Plant, man. And that's sad because him, Boots, it's a few of them, man, that they deserve some shine because they got, they got, and, and Caleb Plant is on another level. I, I, I ain't trying to disrespect him by putting him with Boots, but I'm just saying that's an exciting fight. I'm comparing him because of the excitement. But Caleb Plant is a champ, man. He's been putting in work for a minute and... I really wanted to see him fight David Benavidez, man. That fight, I don't give a fuck what nobody say. That's a good fight. I can't pick a winner in that fight. They got two different styles, and both styles can equalize the other. It's just about the wills of the men. And they both, no joke. So that's a fight that we got to wait and see what happens, man. For real. I don't really have a favorite in that fight. I like both fighters coming in. Will we ever get that fight? I don't know. Why? Because Canelo Alvarez is doing some sucker shit. And we don't know. You know, fights is about money. If, if Benavidez don't have a belt, why? what's the incentive for Caleb Plant to fight him? He not going to risk his shit and give Benavidez a shot at fucking up what he's trying to do. Now, Benavidez come with a belt. All right, I'll meet you in the middle. We can fight. So, that fight ain't gonna happen unless Benavidez get his hand on another belt. Because, for to I mean, reality it doesn't make sense for Caleb Plant to take that fight, regardless of the threat. Right now, he would have to fight. Um, I would he would be better off fighting other contenders, you know what I mean, and just keep on his role and get and try to collect some belts. Now, when Benavidez get a belt again, come see him. So, I don't know. Um, I don't know, man, but Canelo Alvarez is barking up the Charlo tree, finally. Let's see if he's real. Let's see if that fight happens, because it's not official, but there is words that um, fam is thinking about, you know, finally taking a fucking chance, so let's see. Let's, I hope I hope he does, man. I really do. I would love to see. Um, That would be a good fight, man. Jamal Charlo versus Canelo? Wow. 
That'd be a good fight, yo. I'm definitely going to go with Charlo, but still. Canelo's not a slouch. He knows how to box. That would be a very, very good fight. Wow. Very good fight. All right. So I got those out the way because those is the easiest topics to cover. I'm sorry. This is not going to be a 15-minute video. We probably going to do like another 10 minutes because I got to talk about this shit. There's a fucking, there's a love triangle scenario or whatever you want to route love rectangle. I don't know what you want to call it. But there's some shit going on, man, with Crawford. And when I say that, I don't mean it in a bad way, but the way things is happening, like, like, there's a lot of bullshit, yo. <clears throat> Pardon me. We understand now why he told Sean Porter that um he has something planned. Come to find out, I think um thanks to Blue Blood and Fernandez, I know they both reported this. Um, Pac-Man was negotiating with Crawford. They did have a deal on the table, and that's why he told Sean Porter to chill because he was trying to get that to happen. So I owe Terrence Crawford an apology because I'm a very big fan of his. But I was getting tight. Because it's like any nigga, you know, you know, if your man, if you know your man could fuck a nigga up and this nigga keep acting like he wanted, you want your man to fuck that nigga, fuck that nigga up, yo. Let that nigga disrespect you. You see, but with Crawford, it was different. And, you know, there's a lot of behind back scenes, back door shit that be happening with boxing. And the fans always the last to know. So that's what it is. So Pac-Man was scheming on fighting Crawford. That would have been nice because then that would have just set up the table for um, Errol Spence and Crawford. If Errol Spence, who I believe will get back past Danny Garcia. And the only reason why I ain't talking about that fight because that's the next big pay-per-view coming up, you know, after Javonta. So I'll get into that more when we get closer to that fight. You know what I'm saying? We still far from that. But it's going to happen soon. Because we're already in October. But the way everything would have fell in the line. It would have been nice. Now. After. We find out that Crawford is fighting Kel Brook. Trying to think. Should. Because you know. I think Crawford will beat Kel Brook. And just, we got to get this Errol Spence fight and Crawford fight. Because Crawford is already like 33. So, I, we need we need Crawford, Pete Crawford. The only thing I would say is he's a little preserved. Thanks to Bob Arum. He's not, he, he doesn't have a lot of, uh, um, you know, he doesn't have a lot of mileage on him. You know, he has good mileage on him. So, that, that's, that goes in his favor, man. And I'm hoping that he'll be at his peak. And Errol Spence is definitely peaking. I don't think he's. At, I don't think Errol Spence is at his best that he could be. I think this get Danny Garcia and this new attitude. We're gonna see whether or not Spence is on the road to greatness. And I'd love for him to meet at some point on his way there with Crawford, so that that we could really see who's the best, especially out of those two, because I think those are everybody's favorite heavy heavy help to. I mean, welterweights. Whether you like one or the other, or like me, I like both. Those are actually my two favorite fighters, and they got me back into boxing hardcore the way I used to be. I chilled with boxing for a minute, but um, not that I, I never stopped watch, watching boxing, but the fever for the flavor, you know, it came back fucking with, with Spence Crawford. Um, now, Sean Porter. Uh, Sean Porter should be the dude that Crawford goes after. After Kell Brook. If he gets past Kell Brook, whoever wins that fight, with all due respect, I'm going to put it that way so it's a little more fair. Um, yeah, whoever wins the fight between Crawford and Kell Brook should definitely challenge Sean Porter. Or they'll have the belt. So they should send um, some terms to Sean Porter. You know what I mean? So that way Crawford can um, fight Crawford. Sean Porter, get that ranking, he already a champion, and once again, they'll probably both have a fight in between, 
but you can have Spence. Well, not really, because if Crawford fights Porter, Spence can fight someone else coming up, and then they can both set up to fight each other. So there's a possibility that we could get the Spence and Crawford fight within the next two years, within it. So maybe by 2022, they could fight. But Bob Arum got to stop playing with Crawford's career like this, man. And it is dope finding out that he was trying to work out the, the Pacquiao situation because, man, my dude Crawford was looking bad, yo. And I was not feeling that, man. I really, really wasn't feeling that, man. But now, pardon me, I got to I gotta hit Phil Fax, stay busy. One of my fans commenting on my basketball video. You need to check out that NBA video I just did if you're a Knicks fan because it was strictly about the Knicks. I ain't going to front. I ain't really touch. I don't touch a lot of other NBA teams when I do my basketball videos. You see what I'm rocking with. And it's because, honestly, I don't follow them teams enough to give you detailed information like I follow the Knicks. Boxing is different. I follow this shit. Straight up. I read articles. I watch videos of people. I watch, When I don't got nothing else to do, I put on old fights and watch the fights. That's just me. I love boxing. Always will. So, Crawford, once again, I apologize. You my dude. I, I, I said it before. Like, that's a nigga that I will fuck with him like on the streets. I could see that being my nigga. He remind me of a couple of my friends, yo. Um, From what I seen from his personality. But, um, I don't know, guys. I don't know. I think that uh, the winner of the Crawford and Kell Brook fight should try to get with Sean Porter before Sean Porter does some dumb shit like goes to try to fight Charlo. Okay? Sean Porter's a fucking... He's a, he's a beast. He'll fight anybody. He talking about moving up to fight Jamal or Jamel. I think it's Jamel he's talking about fighting. I don't know, but he should stay at welterweight. He's in a great position because even though he got losses on his record, all his losses is to official niggas, and he hasn't had to start over. He already got a reputation. It's like Adrian Brown. I, I think Fernand said that shit. Like, certain fighters, like, people people gonna fuck with them. No matter what. Adrian Broner is a star. Nobody can take that away, no matter what, because people go to see him. I think Sean Porter is similar where... You know what you're going to get with Sean Porter. So people will gladly pay to go see him. And maybe before the Errol Spence, you know, before the Errol Spence fight, Errol Spence was able to crack at him about his numbers and shit. And a lot of people probably didn't know whether or not it was true. But after that fight, there's no way you confront because Sean Porter's supporters, Sean Porter's supporters, yo, his peoples, they got his back. And... They spending money on his fights. So, that would make a nice, I think that would be a nice prelude to what we want to see, you know, ultimately, man. It would, be, it would be cool to see Porter and Crawford go at it. See how he does against, uh, how he Crawford does against Porter. And that would give us a better idea of what type of fight we could expect with Spence and, um, and, um, and Crawford because, we getting a new Spence too. So we're going to get a, a glimpse of the new Spence in shape on time Spence. And Crawford will give us validation for why we be fucking holding him down like that. Because he's going to crush. He's going to beat the shit out of Kell Brook. So don't get me wrong. I know Kell Brook ain't pussy. But I think Crawford is a little frustrated. And that's the only reason why I'm worried for him in this fight. Is because I know how Crawford is. Crawford's a real nigga. He'll get in there and bang it out. And I would just like him to go in there and just tear him up, tear him up until he starts to crumble in the 10th round, and then you just knock him out. Just break him down. Don't go in there. I know how Crawford likes to do. When he want to prove himself, he'll get in there and start banging. Kel Brooks is a banger. That's, that's playing to his favor. I need Crawford to be on the back foot using his boxing skills. Or do... I need him to definitely do what he usually do and switch things around here and there. But it got to be smart, strategic switches. Don't do them just to do them. Don't switch from Southpaw to, you know, like just go in there and use your skills that you have because you got skills, kid. But use them wisely and when necessary. And that's what I hope Crawford does against Kel Brook. If he does, he'll be fine. And then we can start talking shit about Crawford fighting Porter. And we'll see Errol Spence fight somebody, and then they can fight each other.
That's what I see happening. As long as Crawford gets past this. Now, the funny shit is we know Errol Spence wants to fight Pac-Man. But, yo, I'm going to start. Yo, I don't give a fuck how many accomplishments Pac-Man got in boxing. All his legendary shit. Yo, Pac-Man is overrated, man. I'm sorry. I understand he, he got heart. I'm not talking about his heart. I'm just talking about the bottom line. The nigga's overrated, fam. It's like some Yao Ming shit. He got a whole fucking country of people that support him. So that's their guy. They're going to fucking vote for him on the All-Star team every year. Don't matter. What, what the fuck is reality? And that's what I feel like is happening with, 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 with Pacquiao. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he whack because clearly we saw what he did to um your man Keith Thurman and shit sleeping on him. But I'm saying overrated because Pacquiao been knocked out I don't know how many fucking times, all right? He been knocked out or lost fights. Um, and, yo, he's a duck, man, straight up, yo. He's a duck. He's a duck. He went to the Mikey Garcia fight with Errol Spence because he wanted to fight Mikey Garcia. Then he playing games with everybody else, Sean Porter, Errol Spence, and on the low, out of everybody, you think you slick. You're trying to pick Terrence Crawford. Why? Because strategically, Terrence Crawford hasn't been busy and his skill set hasn't been tested in a long period of time. And so Pacquiao sees a way in there. Believe me, man. Believe me. I see it, y'all. Pacquiao is a slick motherfucker. That's why he in politics in his country. He's not stupid. He know how to move. He already beat. He beat the easier champions. That's why he picked um Keith Thurman in the first place. Cause Keith Thurman was a rusty ass nigga when he with the belt. All right. So he beat him. So now instead of fighting Errol Spence, who's hot, you just seen him whoop Mikey Garcia's ass, a small guy about the same size as Pacquiao. Now nah, Pacquiao don't want to fight that nigga. Nah, he want he so he gonna fight Crawford. And the only reason why I think Pacquiao was thinking about fighting Crawford, because right now I don't even know if Pacquiao gonna box again, because he's talking about fighting McGregor. That nigga's old, so he got the win-win scenario going on. But if he does fight Crawford, Crawford gonna fuck him up. But I think he'd rather get fucked up by Crawford than knocked out by Spence. Pick your poison. Either way, I don't think Pacquiao is beating the rest of the guys available as far as the champions, man. The, either one of them, you're going to lose, buddy. So I think, and you saw how he almost got stripped from his belt because he was talking about fighting Conor McGregor, right? So now, what it is, he, Pacquiao's trying to cash out. And I know he's not poor, but like I said, they all do this shit for money. And he's getting old, so he's trying to get that last big payday before he weasel his way out of the game. That's what I see. And that's what it is. And on that note, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to let y'all go. Even though I could hold you up. Because I got it like that. But I'm not. Phil Facts, Snobby Sports. This has been boxing, y'all. There'll be more boxing. But I'm, I'm going to have to wait for a while. Because unfortunately, we don't get a lot of boxing back to back. So we got the same scenarios lingering, and I don't want to keep talking about the same shit. I hate that. That's why I haven't made a video about basketball all week. That being said, I'm out of here. You know why. I got it like that. Peace.